Welcome to this video where we're going to go over all the amazing features that we have been implementing towards the AI agents. This will really help you in leveling up your AI agent builds with more powerful features natively instead of needing to do all kinds of workarounds to achieve the same thing. So in this video, we're going over each and every feature that we have added. First of all, let's go over the AI knowledge base because if you can see here, there's a new entry for AI knowledge base. From here, you can use the OpenAI connection. So you will need to have the OpenAI provider installed on your workspace in order to create vector stores and files. And from there, you can connect that vector store towards your AI knowledge base. So there are a few notes to make here in order for you to make a successful knowledge base. First of all, if you go with the files, your files always need to end at a file extension like .pdf, dot xls dot doc and so on because otherwise the files will not be able to be read by openai and or also connected towards the vector store you will get an error uh, or the vector store will just reject the file because it cannot basically index the file properly you can either upload the files directly here from your computer or when creating the vector store itself you can give it a name you can also determine whether or not the vector store is going to expire if it's something temporary you can add the files here if you already connected separate files or you can upload the files directly towards the vector store by using this feature that will upload the file from your computer once you created the vector store you can go with the knowledge base and inside the knowledge base you will give it the name you can give it the description which is op optional and then you can go with the vector store once done and once safe, you can use this knowledge base inside of your AI agents. But how does this exactly work? Well, if we go inside an AI agent, we will be able to take a look at the settings and then for models. And as you can see, we now have a new model called OpenAI Responses. And OpenAI Responses is a means by OpenAI to replace the OpenAI assistance, which will be deprecated as of next year, I believe in August, then you will need to be fully migrated towards an OpenAI responses model. And because of this, we added OpenAI responses directly towards AI agents, making it easier than ever to create your AI agent and really migrate your assistance as well. Once you select the OpenAI responses, then you will be able to select your model as normal, but we will have a new feature set here called tools with OpenAI responses. If we take a look, you can now directly connect MCP servers, your knowledge base towards your AI agent without the need of triggering any functions to then use the separate actions that we already had inside the flow builder. You can now directly connect your MCP server and your knowledge base without any issues. This makes it so much easier to connect these powerful features towards your AI agents, and you don't need to have any complicated AI functions to be triggered, which also reduces the number of errors. You can also use the web search. So if you don't have an MCP server you want to connect to, you don't have a knowledge base where you have your files connected to, then you can use the web search. Now, there are a few side notes to make here. First of all, you can restrict the web search with specific domains. So if you have a root domain and you have a subdomain, you can use those domains by comma separation and just remove the HTTPS and just go with this format, for example. If you have a subdomain, let's say uh, app.google.com, right? Then you can use these comma separations to include all the domains that you only want the AI agent to search through. The side note here is that not all models will respond with the restriction in domain search. So for example, if you are using the mini model of GPT 4.1 or GPT 4.1 Nano, then they do support web search, but they do not support domain restriction. So that, this is really important that if you use these models that you need to take into account that it basically does a free web search without any account or notice about the restriction in domains. So if you need that, you will need to go with GPT 4.1, which is also why we have added this as a default model, just to make sure that the domain restriction also works by default. Another thing to note is that for the users that are using GPT 5, because this model use 
a feature called reasoning. It takes a lot longer to generate a reply because it really thinks if you are familiar, for example, with GPT itself and you have GPT-5 there, you will see it thinking, basically reasoning with itself about providing the best possible answer. So this also increases the time it takes before giving a reply back to, through the API request. And that may result in more increased timeout errors. So take into account that if you use GPT-5 for more advanced logics, that it might take a lot longer for you to get a reply and also see the increased timeouts inside of your error log. So advised is that the agent, for example, remains at a lower model, which does not have this reasoning. And then inside of your AI functions, inside of your um, workflows that are connected towards your AI functions, you might use separate actions that you can use GPT-5, for example, but just take into account that GPT-5 models, at this moment in time at least, because of their reasoning, have more increased timeouts due to the longer thinking process of the model as well as the reply generation of it. Also, another side note is that if you use GPT-5, because it takes a lot of reasoning, a lot of thinking, it also uses up more tokens. So most AI agents will have a default of 500, maybe three or 200 tokens. If you use GPT-5, advice is that you go with a minimum of 2000 tokens because the reasoning just uses up a lot more, right? So also take into account that if you use GPT-5, the cost per token is not only higher, but you also need more tokens to generate a single reply. These are the new changes that we have implemented inside of the AI agents, where you can now use the OpenAI responses model in order to get access to MCP servers, AI knowledge base, and the web search feature natively towards the AI agents, making it so much easier to use these powerful features and really level up your AI agents. If you have any issues, if you have any questions, any doubts, do let us know and we'll try to answer that as soon as possible. But for now, have a great day, take care and talk soon.